Hello, I'm Timothy Perfect from Two Canoes Software, and I'm excited today to introduce you to the latest version of WinClone, WinClone 10. WinClone is the easiest way to manage your bootcamp partition, and we're introducing this really exciting new feature called Quick Install Windows. Quick Install Windows allows you to select an ISO of Microsoft's Windows 10 or 11 and quickly install that onto your bootcamp partition without having to use Bootcamp Assistant. And it's very fast. Within uh, about three minutes, it will install Windows onto your bootcamp partition. You can reboot into it and then it'll boot up and you can start setting it up. It also will inject any of the drivers that are needed on your specific Mac model. Um, you'll select your Windows support folder and then it'll go through and, and install the correct drivers. So we're really excited about this new feature. We've also done um, an enhancement to the interface. We've refreshed some of the, uh, the icons, uh, the UI, as well as we've rearranged the uh, main interface. So let's go ahead and get started. I'll show you what's new. Create an image of your bootcamp partition. Simply open up WinClone and click Create Image from Volume. This will bring up the, uh, a sheet that will ask you to select your, at your bootcamp partition. You click Select Volume and it'll only show you the volumes that are available. Click on Volume. You'll leave the Make WinPE Bootable on Restore uh, unchecked and then simply click Save Image. And then it'll prompt and say, are you sure you want to do that? Click on Save. Then we'll give it a name and we'll call this My Windows image and then click on save and that'll go ahead and start making a full um, backup of the wing clone partition and then it'll allow you which the next step would be to restore this either onto the same machine or onto a new machine To create a bootcamp partition to restore a WinClone image onto it, we use Disk Utility. Disk Utility is found in the, your Utilities folder, so I'll go to the Go menu and I'll choose Utilities, and you can see it's here under Disk Utility. And to create a bootcamp partition, we simply just select the internal drive that's selected for us, click Partition, and then we click Plus. And then uh, when it prompts to say add partition or add volume, you have to select add partition. Add volume is for APFS. Add partition is a, is a physical partition. Um, so we will do, adjust the size to be about 50 uh, gigabytes. And we'll call this Windows. And I will make it uh, XFAT. And it set the size automatically for me. And then I simply click apply. And once I do that, it'll go ahead and partition the drive. It will warn me that the computer is going to become unresponsive. So we, um, once you hit continue, we'll just wait for a bit and then the bootcamp partition will be created. To restore WinClone image, simply select the Restore Image button in the main interface, and then select the WinClone image that you created. In this example, I did my Windows 11 image on the desktop, and I'll select that. If you've done any incremental backups, you can then select which one that you want. In this case, I only have the one, so I'll leave that selected. Then I'll select my destination. The destination was created in Disk Utility or as an existing bootcamp partition. It needs to either be MS-DOS, XFAT, or NTFS in order to select it. So I'll select it now and then I'll click on Restore Image, and uh, it'll warn me, are you sure you want to be able to do that? Then I'll click on Restore Image, and the image will be completely restored. To download your bootcamp drivers, you go into Bootcamp Assistant, which is located in your Utilities folder. So I'll go to Utilities, and then I'll select Bootcamp Assistant. Once we've done that, we then go uh, up to the Action menu and select Download Windows Support Software. And this downloads the drivers specific for this Mac model that you have it on. And I can save this to my desktop, 
or anywhere you want to, but uh, I normally save it to my desktop and then click save. I've already saved it here, so I won't save it again because it's about a, a gig or two, um, so it takes a while, but that'll save all of the uh, drivers to your uh, to that folder. Then um, you can copy this folder once you've finished installing Windows or restoring WinClone um, packet or WinClone image. You then double click on the setup and then it'll completely install all the drivers. You also use this folder to inject drivers using WinClone. And I'll show you how to do that as well. To inject drivers using WinClone, Simply go up to the Tools menu and select Add Bootcamp Drivers. It'll select you to select the, the driver folder, and you select the folder that you downloaded from Bootcamp Assistant in the Action menu. So you just open up Bootcamp Assistant, choose Action, download Windows Support Software, save it to a folder, which I've done here on the desktop, and you can see I have Windows Support. So I'll double click on that, and I just need to select the top level folder because it'll search and find all the drivers. And then I'll select my destination, which will be my bootcamp partition. So I'll select that one and then I'll click inject drivers. It'll then list all the different drivers that are available or that it's going to inject um, that will allow me to have keyboard and mouse and the mass storage device. It won't install all the utilities from Apple. You still need to run the setup.exe to do that, but this will inject all the critical drivers to get you up and running. So I'll click on OK and it'll go ahead and mount. It'll go ahead and inject those uh, bootcamp uh, drivers. To mount your bootcamp partition as read write, simply go into WinClone and go to the tools menu and choose mount read write. Then select your bootcamp partition. In this case, it's called Windows, and I'll click on mount. What I usually like to do is drag the Windows support folder over to the top level of the, the bootcamp partition. That way, once I boot into Windows, I can just go in and double click on this setup.exe and it'll completely install all the drivers that are required. So it's very easy. You can also copy other files and folders over there that will then make Windows available, but it's a great way to be able to cop some, copy some arbitrary files to your bootcamp partition. To quickly install Windows, simply click the Quick Install Windows, and it'll prompt you for the items that you need to quickly install Windows. The first one is the Windows ISO, so you can download that from Microsoft. Um, uh, just uh, on Microsoft's site, if you're part of the volume purchase program, you can get it from there, but if you uh, normally just Google it and you'll be able to find the Windows ISO to do it. Then you need the driver folder. The driver folder is available. You can download that in Bootcamp Assistant in your Utilities folder. So you go into Utilities, select Bootcamp Assistant, go into the Action menu and choose, choose Download uh, Windows Support Software, and then I'll save it to a folder. You can see I have it right here called Windows Support on my desktop. So I'll go ahead and select that now. So you can see this is on my desktop, Windows Support, and I'll click on Open, and then it'll, it'll select that uh, Drivers folder. Then finally, you need your target volume, and that's, uh, oops, I didn't select my ISO. So I'll select my ISO on my desktop that I downloaded from Microsoft. And then I'll select my destination um, as my bootcamp partition. That bootcamp partition was either an existing bootcamp partition or one that was created with Disk Utility by going into Disk Utility and creating a, a, a partition that's formatted as either XFAT or MS-DOS. And you, you could use an existing bootcamp partition if you wanted to, but it will, over -erase, it will erase it. So you notice here when I selected my Windows ISO, it gives me selects which version I would like to have of Windows, and I'll choose the professional workstation. Then when I click on quick install, it'll prompt me, are you sure you want to be able to do that? And it will go ahead in about three minutes, restore um, or actually install Windows onto that bootcamp partition, inject the critical drivers, and then you'll be able to boot into that Windows 10 or 11 and be able to start going through the Windows setup. All right, Windows 11 has now been installed. 
um, and uh, we can go ahead and boot into Windows. If you do have a secure, secure boot enabled on the Mac and it's Windows 11, you do need to disable that and you click on more info for that information. If you need to mass deploy a bootcamp partition to a bunch of different Macs, the best way to do it is using a package from WinClone Pro. So to be able to do that, we'll just simply click Create Package, and then we need to select an existing WinClone image. And this is, normally you would set up Windows on a machine and uh, make sure that it has everything you need installed, and then, uh, then do sysprep on it so it's ready to be able to be deployed. And I have that image here on my desktop. Um, and then we have partitioning options, and there's two different partitioning options. One is that you can restore to an existing partition, so it'll either have a very specific partition or you can have it automatically detect it. And then the second option is to create a bootcamp partition if it doesn't exist. And you can select both of these, so that means it'll check to restore. If there's one existing, it'll restore to it. If not, it'll create it. And then you can specify the size as well. For me, I will select 50% Mac, 50% Windows. Um, boot mode, you need to normally would need this to be just leave it on detect and because uh, most modern Macs are EFI, but if for some reason you need to force legacy, that's there as well. If you sysprep the WinClone image and you want to be able to specify some startup op or setup options, you can specify the or naming customization. You can do the organization, uh, the owner's name, time zone, computer name using variables. If you click here, it'll tell you all the different variables you can use. So it's a great way to be able to do that customization. Furthermore, you can create user accounts. And again, that requires sysprep, um, but you click on initial setup after first boot, select the admin username and password, and then you can have it automatically log in as well. And so that will go ahead and, and create the user and log in and, runs, and run any finishing scripts you need to set up Windows. So I'll go ahead and click on Create Package, and I'll call this my great wing clone uh, package, and I'll click on Save. Now it's been saved, I can click on OK, which will dismiss this, or Show Sysprep folder. And this is the folder you put all the different resources in it. We include a README to know exactly what to do. We also include a sample login.bat script that doesn't do anything that you can customize that this would be able to be able to run once, you've, uh, once Windows has been uh, restore. The WinClone image has been restored with the package. So now on our desktop, we have this package um, and you can, let me see, go to my desktop. There's my, my great WinClone package. And we can, um, we can go ahead and install this package either manually or through any client management system that we have. So that's a great way to be able to deploy uh, win, Windows uh, across a bunch of different bootcamp partitions. One of the great features of WinClone Pro is the ability to create a WinClone image from a WinPE file. So let me show you how to do that. I have WinClone Pro open up here, so I'll go up to Tools and choose Create WinClone Image from WIM. So I'll go ahead and select the WIM. Um, I don't uh, have a disk image mounted, so I will double click on this ISO from Microsoft. You can normally get this from your Windows install media. And it's normally under um, Sources and it's called uh, boot.wim. So I will select that. Actually, it's easier if I just drag it in and select that boot.wim. And then I'll click on Save Image, and I'll call this uh, win, win clone Image from Wim. <laughs> And now you would use that WinClone image that we created from that WIM. So this is a great way if you've already in your Microsoft environments created a WIM that has all the, the drivers and all the software installed, and you just want to be able to deploy that as either a WinClone image or as a WinClone package. WinClone Pro allows you to easily sign WinClone packages so that when you deploy them, the user's not prompted that it's an unsigned package and you know that the package hasn't been altered. To do that, you go up to Tools and choose Sign WinClone Package. Then you select the package 
and I'll choose my great WinClone package I've already created. And then I'll click, click Select Signing Identity. And this looks for the identity that you install in your keychain from your Apple developer account or your enterprise plan from Apple um, that allows you to select um, the uh, package for signing. So then we'll go ahead and choose the um, developer distribution. And then it'll, when I'll click on Sign Package, it allows you to do my great signed package. And I'll click on save, it'll create a new package that's been signed. And then when I deploy it, it'll have the green check mark that shows that that package has been signed. If you need to view the log while doing an operation in WinClone or when you're at the main screen, Click on the log button and it'll open up the WinClone log. You'll have the option to clear it or to copy and paste it into a support ticket. If uh, during an operation you need to see the log and you don't have access to this button, you can simply press Command L and that will show the log as well. Thank you very much for watching. We're very excited to release WinClone 10, um, excited about the new features for the quick install windows, and to make sure that WinClone stays compatible with the most modern versions of macOS, macOS Monterey. So thanks very much for watching and have a great day.